All right, welcome everyone. Sorry for the short delay on the start. Uh, my name is Wiley Brazier the fifth, and I definitely appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, this is the GEG Louisiana. Um, this is the GEG Louisiana Distance Learning Webinar Series. And let's go ahead. I'm going to uh, go through the uh, opening deck real quick. And so here we are. Uh, all right, there we are. Okay, so this is being brought to you by StreamYard. So we want to make sure that we shout out everyone and shout out StreamYard for helping us to expand our reach as well. So right now we are broadcasting live on YouTube, also in our Facebook group, and then also uh, on Twitter as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Wally Brage the Fifth, and I am a uh, Google certified educator or trainer and an innovator, uh, as well as the GEG uh, Louisiana leader. And most recently, I actually just got uh, Google selected me to be the Google educator group mentor for the South Central United States. And so now I support uh, all of those groups and educators in Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Arkansas, uh, Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. So uh, happy that uh, to be serving them as always. Want to send a huge shout out to one of the captains, Tyler, who's always here to support uh, everything that we are doing here as well. Um, before we get started today, you all, for those of you who are in um, Baton Rouge, and if you would send us a send us a real quick shout out on in the chat to let us know where you are chiming in from today, where you're watching from today. Um, in Louisiana, here we just in Baton Rouge, where I am, we just bypassed a storm. Okay, so that was uh, a close call. So, um, but we also have the United States. I would be remiss if I did not uh, take a moment of silence for um, Jacob Blake, who was shot um, in Kenosha, Wisconsin. He is okay, but I do want to take a moment of silence and hope for his speedy recovery um, there. So we'll take this quick moment of silence. All right. So moving forward here, um, our website is geglouisiana.com. We've got a bunch of different resources there. Uh, shout out to everyone who's uh, who's watching from Mexico and Texas and uh, Sydney, Australia is here as well. And so if you again would chime in and let us know where you're watching from, uh, that would be awesome. And we can uh, shout you out. So I'll show that, uh, Ricardo chiming in from Mexico. So that's awesome. Um, and then we have uh, my chiming in from Texas. So that's awesome uh, as well. Great, great, great. So um, moving forward here today, we have uh, let's go also from California. Great, great, great. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Let us know where you're chiming in from. Then we've also got the Philippines here. Awesome. All over, all over. We are great. That's great. Awesome. Awesome. Continue to let us know where you're chiming in from and we'll shout you out during the session here. And then um, Laura, uh, I see you're watching from YouTube. Maybe just refresh your screen. Uh, just refresh your screen and you should be able to access it then. All right. Um, and so today I do want to welcome Carrie Furs. OK, she is joining us. For, and hi, Carrie. How are you? How are you? Thank you. Hello to All everyone. Right. There. What's that? Hello to everyone from down yeah. under. From down under, yes. And so <laughs> Carrie is joining us from Sydney, Australia. That is like awesome. Um, 
And so Carrie is uh, going to talk to us today about uh, a COVID and me class book. And so I am going to uh, switch over and let her share her screen here. All right. And so today uh, she's going to tell us about that. And Carrie, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you at this time. Thank you so much, Wiley, and um, hi, everybody there. I'm Carrie Furs, and I'm the creator of the Family Book Form Technology. So thank you for joining this COVID-19 and Me Collaborative Class Book Masterclass today. So um, Wiley is recording this webinar, and um, you'll also be able to access the slides at that bit.ly link at the top and right inside of the screen there. So. A special thank you to Wiley for and the Louisiana Google Educators Group for hosting this event today and for um, the newly mentored Wiley Brazier, who's the Executive Director of Instructional Technology at Einstein Charter Schools and um, who's a great advocate of effective education technology. So Wiley has become a Family Book Form ambassador. So if you use his code when you're signing up on the Family Book Form website for free, you'll have the opportunity to get project discounts for your school and specialized professional learning and mentoring and chances to showcase your projects if you want to. So when you sign up on the familybookform.com website, you can use Wiley's code, um, that's QY9TZN, and you just enter that when prompted in the sign up process. So thank you to Wiley for hosting the masterclass today. So, I created the Family Book Form Technology as a resource for teachers to assign communication project-based learning to students for engagement and to develop 21st century skills and to easily create an end product that is valuable to everyone involved. So students interview people, particularly their families, about their lives and life experiences and automatically collect their content into personalised books. So I specifically created these projects to be done by teenagers because it's in the teenage years that young people start turning away from their families and more towards their peer groups for guidance and to develop their values and identity. So now this is a natural progression of their development to adulthood, but research all over the world is showing that young people are feeling more isolated and disconnected and anxious about their future than ever before. So these communication projects are mostly about getting kids to bond with their families and communities. So they develop those, those are really important emotional connections before it's too late. And saving those conversations and interactions into a digital end product like a book has longevity and is able to be monetized. So, but teachers can also use this technology to create a collaborative class book where you invite your class of students to automatically contribute a chapter and build a collaborative class book together. So this could be especially valuable at the moment in the current global pandemic where you can automatically create free personalized historical records of your students' experiences. And that automatically creates a personal book that you can share with your families and community and it can be kept as an important primary source record book in your school's library. So I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes or so um, going through some slides to explain why this is a valuable resource for teachers and show you some case studies where teachers have been awarded for their projects with their students and some are presenting their case studies in new um, education research globally. And there are opportunities for you to do this as well if you want. Then we'll do a deeper dive into how the tech works and I'll show you what, <clears throat> excuse me, the book creating dashboard looks like and how easy it is for you and your students to use. So let's get started. Uh, some burning problems for teachers um, at, at the moment and, um, is limited time, limited resources, specifically money, and the shopping list of objectives you need to achieve with your students. And these problems have become even worse lately with the current ban pandemic where online learning difficulties have been added to that also. So how do you motivate students remotely? How do you deliver lessons that are personal and differentiated? And what is the reward for students to even do this work that's required? So 
The family book from Solution addresses all of these demands with communication project-based learning, where students collaborate with each other, their families, and collect personal content and photos into books that are valuable. So students have agency over the content they collect or contribute, and this motivates them to be interested to learn, whatever the lesson is that you're teaching. And the whole process helps develop um, students' stronger relationships and connections, which are vital for their mental health. So we're a Google partner, and this means that we adhere to all the student data and privacy requirements nowadays. Uh, we've integrated into the Google Classroom platform, and we're in Chromebooks. Um, and this just makes it easy for teachers to assign as a project to a whole class or year group and give feedback and a grade through that classroom platform. But you can use any communication portal or platform that your school uses. And uh, the technology is accessible on any device connected to Wi-Fi. So you don't need to, uh, especially for the collaborative class book, you don't need to use Google. And I'll show you how that works shortly. So the family book form technology also ticks every requirement identified by ISTE standards for education technology excellence. So I won't go into detail now, but you can go back and have a look at this slide whenever you want to. But you can be reassured as a teacher that this technology is addressing all of the requirements identified as being important when using technology in education. And using the SAMA framework, um, educators are realizing the importance of that second tier results from that technology now, where the first tier is just substitution or augmentation and students use uh, technology instead of pen and paper. But the second tier is modification and redefinition, and that's transformational learning. And this is where family book form is positioned because students are using technology to create original projects previously inconceivable. And with pedagogy aligned to the um, universal design learning framework of the why, what and how of learning, students can easily achieve personalised and differentiated learning by using the templates, the online templates and question prompts, the speech to text and collaborating with many. So BookForms process has three main components, um, that's collect, edit and present. So students collect or contribute personal content into a digital format. They can use the speech to text in any language and contributions from others. The second stage is edit. So students' content can be used to enrich your existing lessons, sort of like a modern day show and tell. Um, they can play the audio files of people they've interviewed in the classroom. And not all students have grandparents or extended family or have the opportunity to go out into their communities. So this is a chance for everyone to enjoy stories in the real voice firsthand and really open up um, their worlds to other people's perspectives and experiences. And this makes uh, students more motivated to learn literacy or history or whatever the lesson is because they have personal connection and agency over their content. So you're there in the classroom, you can also do collaborative editing as a class and the sharing stories develops peer bonding. And the third stage is present. Books can be graded and included in the student's portfolio for reflection and proof of learning. And students can gift or sell the printed books to their families. And it can even be a fundraiser for the school. So I'll explain that in a little bit more detail later. So now I'd like to share with you some examples of how teachers and students have used the technology to create collaborative class books of value. So the first one is that um, COVID-19 and me Blakehurst High School did um, this uh, as an English enrichment in year seven. The teachers sent an automated link to students to contribute a chapter on their feelings, experiences and photos on being restricted to home during a pandemic. Now the students clicked on that link and they used their Google sign-in or school email and immediately landed on a template page. So this is the template page that the students would see. So instead of a blank page, they have a template page, which gives them a little bit more scaffolding with their writing. Um, on the left hand side, they can see your instructions. So you can be um, as specific as you want um, with the students of what you want them to contribute. In this case, it's the COVID-19 and me book, but you could make it about any topic that's important um, to your class. And maybe specifically uh, lately, it could be about Black Lives Matter book. And so they contribute their uh, whatever you ask them to contribute about that subject. 
um, students write their contribution, upload some photos, and when they're ready, um, they can click submit and their work automatically appears in the uh, class book that you can you control. So the teachers said um, with this COVID-19 and me book, they were very conscientious about wanting to write well because they realised the significance and value of their primary source documentation of a historical event. And so the students were really excited that their published book could be included in their school's library and it'd be of value for future generations. So I'll show you an example of that finished book. Um, uh, we'll just go to the front cover of the book here. Uh, my internet's being slow, typical. Go to contents. Okay, so this is the what the digital book looks like. And so each book is private until you share it. So there's options here for sharing. Um, so you can post this into your school's newsletter or on your website or send to families digitally or print on demand. And so this teacher... Uh, invited, there was two classes of students were invited and so as they made their contributions in their dashboard from their template page that you saw, they automatically appear in the contents page here. So this is also an opportunity for teachers to share their experiences also with students and families. So the teacher wrote an introduction here about how, uh, what was her objective and, and um, of this particular assignment. And the um, principal of the school even contributed a chapter to the book. So she, the principal was able to share with her community, her families and students, how the school was affected and how the teachers and staff were affected. And so it's a great way for everyone to share their that contributed automatically got a double page spread in the book. And so there's about 200 words on um, one side of the page. And so they were asked to contribute up to 200 to 20 words and some photos and that automatically created their double page spread in that book. So that's what that, the finished digital book looks like. And so you as the teacher control the book and so you can edit that and I'll show you what the dashboard looks like shortly. So another example is the favorite recipes book. And so this is a popular project. It can be a collaborative class book where the teacher collects students' favorite food, recipes and cultural stories into a class recipe book or each student can create their own family's personalized recipe book. And so this can address various curriculum requirements such as a research project or writing or history. And so this is Nikita. Uh, she was a year six student and she worked asynchronously at home at her own pace and then synchronously in the class. And this could be um, okay for online lessons as well. And she could share um, interviews that she did with her grandma and uh, speaking about grandma's favorite um, bouillabaisse and different um, stories that she could share in the classroom and they could collaboratively edit that as well. And so the end book is popular as a fundraiser for the school because um, families really value that end book product. So similar to how families used to buy their child's photo each year, they now can buy their family's favorite uh, personalized recipe book. And it, this is a, a nice other option to instead of just selling chocolates and cookies all the time. Um, another example was as a STEAM project. Um, the, the arts teacher wanted to blend art and technology. So this class created a Mother's Day book where each student wrote a poem and painted or drew a picture of their mother and uploaded to their family book form template page. So they worked in class and at home over several weeks and the book could um, be posted in the newsletter. Um, they shared it on the website and they printed on demand as, as families who uh, requested it. Uh, this teacher published STEAM research and presented at conferences in Canada and Australia. Um, so we've been generating some great uh, results and case studies over the last three years. We've had research published by Digital Promise and you see the bottom left hand photo there. Uh, that was a project done by San Jose Homeschool, an online teacher. She spoke about how the students' content enriched her lessons. And so that adds another dimension to um, her typical online learning, um, which can be difficult to engage 
uh, the students when everyone's separated like that. The photo on the top left hand side is of two students in the classroom. They're role playing, interviewing their grandparents using the template and question prompts. So one student is dressed like grandpa and the other boy is interviewing him. And so this makes a fun um, lesson and the kids really enjoyed the dress up, but it's teaching hugely valuable lessons of active listening and communication skills and using technology as a tool. So that teacher is publishing new boys literacy research this month and she presented at EduTech in Sydney recently. Uh, teachers and students have won awards for their projects. The middle top photo is teachers being awarded by the Minister of Education in Australia for the third year running. And that middle bottom photo is a boy in Texas who won an award at his local fair for the book he created over the summer break. And um, the right-hand photos that we've generated TV coverage and, and that was national through Australia and um, newspaper coverage. So this was a project with year nine students um, and it was called the Rite of Passage. And they went into elder care homes and each student was paired with an aged resident and they interviewed their resident once a week for an hour over 10 weeks and created that resident's memoir. And they then gifted that memoir to that resident and their family. So the elder care business paid the school to do that project. So this is an opportunity for businesses in your community to pay your school to do history saving projects. And all this can be done online remotely too. Um, so there's lots of opportunities for you to do projects in your community and there's also funding uh, from state and federal funding at the moment for projects that add to uh, libraries and museums. So you could do a history saving project in your town and um, add that or donate that to the local library and you can get funding. So if you're interested in getting funding for projects like that, just uh, contact me through the website. So what do you need to do to start a project? So only teachers can sign up free and then you send an automated link to students to either contribute to your class book or they can create their own book. So students can't sign up until you send them a link. <clears throat> so teachers sign up free and there's a first book is free. So as an example, you could create a COVID-19 and me collaborative class book for free. And that uh, means you can access the book creating dashboard um, and the book is private until you share it. And the digital book is hosted online for one year. You can invite up to 300 students to contribute content to your book. There's two hours of speech to text. So you don't even have to write. You can speak what you want to say into the book. You can share the digital book online or download the PDF version of that and print on demand as much as you like. So after the first book is free, um, it's then $10 to get a book creating license. So you can create another class book for $10, maybe a Black Lives Matter book um, or how your town was created or why your town is there um, and get the contributions from many people in the community. And that's $10 to have a project online, that book creating dashboard for a year and all those other benefits that are listed there. So or you can assign um, uh, as a, a communication project to each student and they are bo each book license for a student is $10. So they can speak their stories or interview others or, and collect stories or they can um, have others can automatically contribute directly into their book. So this is a great um, uh, uh, functionality for younger or less academic students. So even if they can't write very well, they can collect a lot of dispersed content automatically into a, a polished end book product and something that they're proud to present and their families would treasure. So there's also online lesson plans, explainer videos and case studies that are being updated all the time on the website. So that's the end of my slides. Um, I'll, let's go to the technology now and I'll show you how you can sign up um, and create your class collaborative um, COVID-19 and me book, for example. So if we go to the um, uh, familybookform.com website, this is uh, the main page here. And so there's a one minute little brief video there, but basically um, it's family communication project. So instead of students um, using a blank page to do a writing, um, this scaffolds them with template pages. So it's, it prompts them and helps them to be able to uh, collect story and then polish that story.
So if you scroll down a little bit, you can see more examples of uh, digital books. And so this is a collaborative class book that the, um, uh, the, uh, the STEM project that the arts teacher did. And you can see that um, she invited these students and um, she also had a chapter, the introduction was done by the principal of the school, talking about the initiatives that that school is doing. So it's a you know, mini brochure on um, what the school is up to. The teacher was doing this as a STEAM research project, so she documented as the kids were doing the projects. Um, and then each kid had their double page spread in the book. So they can have up to 10 pages as a chapter, but um, this was for years uh, five and six, and so they just did the double page spread. It means more um, students can contribute to a book. Uh, the books are limited to 300 pages, so um, yeah, it's best just to get a, a class or a couple of classes to, to contribute content. So that's what that the finished book looks like. So this other example book on the main website is the Family Recipes book. So this was the one that was done by Nikita I showed you before. I've just put my name on it for the, the website. So she invited her family to contribute to their favorite recipes and, and she wrote the um, introduction. So she spoke about her family um, and they came from Europe and Grandma's um, famous Bullier Bay's recipe and the stories there. Um, so these were automatically contributed by her family members. So she didn't actually have to do too much writing, um, but it's a great product. And, and this is German um, here because someone in the family is German. So you, it can be in any language that you want to. So this is great for family that um, are non-native English speakers. They can um, contribute content in any language. And the books are also branded with the school's logo. So it's a nice fundraiser um, project as well. The other example on the main website here is um, Grandad's Memoir. And so this is um, a great project for English life writing um, when students have to create a biography or autobiography. Um, so they can interview someone or they can speak their own stories. And so I'll show you the dashboard shortly, but whatever is inputted into that dashboard was automatically propagated here. And so this automatically collates um, all the stories and the information into chapters and sections and it is a nice polished book at the end that they're proud to share and families would value. So that's the, um, the website there. There's lesson plans. There's the testimonial from the San Jose teacher. There's little snippet how it works videos and case studies that are being updated all the time. So you can have a look at those. So if you go to the top right hand side, there's the teacher sign up. This is where you can use your Google sign in or an email. And so um, I'll, I'll show you the steps here. So you can, in, um, the first step is uh, enter with, uh, with your Google email or um, your school email. You can then enter your name and you create a password. And then um, you can enter Wiley Brazier's ambassador code there. That's the prompt there. And then you go through to the dashboard. So I'll show you the dashboard now. So I'll do my um, login because I've already signed up. So I'll sign in. Sign in. And this goes through to the teacher's dashboard. So this dashboard um, won't have this project when you first land here because it's um, you won't have created a project yet. But there's three little explainer videos here on the dashboard and you can just watch those um, for little prompts on how to uh, create a collaborative book, how to add a project and how to assign through the classroom platform if you want to. But up here is your free try. So this is where you can create um, your COVID-19 and class book for free as a free try demo book. So this is the book creating dashboard. So that's different from the project creating dashboard that we were just on. So this is the book creating dashboard that whatever you enter into here then automatically collates into the book. Um, and if you assign as communication projects to your students and they do their own books, then this is what they would see. This is the book creating dashboard. So on the left hand side is the scaffolding to build their book. So there's the book cover is the first 
list and they just um, name the book. So you can, if you're doing your COVID-19 and me class book, you would name your class book. You could put the whole class as the author of the book and you can upload um, a picture of all your students or um, a picture of the school, whatever you want to do. Um, you can then write um, or speak an introduction here. So you can click record if you want to speak it. And then this takes you through to a dashboard where you've got up to 200 languages you, you can use to uh, speak your introduction into that. So where you go back and there'll be a blue button here and then you click um, and that automatically trans, uh, transcribes it straight into that answer box there. So then that would automatically propagate into your digital book. So we're not going to use these parts at the moment, but I'll just quickly show you. If a student is using this for a communication project where they're speaking their story or interview... Inter attention, attention, attention. <laughs> Please be advised that currently we have a fault in the in the lift system and no lifts are currently operating. We will try to resolve this problem as soon as possible. We will give an announcement when the lift, at least one lift, is back in operation. Thank you for, for your patience. Sorry about that. They're doing some electrical work on my building. So this is um, the automatic um, propagation of content into the book. And so this is the template prompts here. So automatically there's four chapter sections here. So if they click, if the student clicks on general, then this would automatically propagate some question prompts here. So each um, question uh, and answer box, they can speak the answer or they can interview someone else to uh, speak their answer or story. And so this um, automatically collates into their book and there's photo pages there too. If they click on the next um, section, the next chapter, that automatically propagates different topics here. And so this is part of how you can um, have personalised learning for the students because they can choose what uh, topics they want to uh, cover, uh, who they want to interview and whether they speak or type or invite people to contribute. So that's the scaffolding. Um, they can add more people if they want uh, to interview more people. Um, if they're going out into the community and interviewing people, they can go into um, different sections. And this is the adolescence, for example, and there's different um, question prompts that uh, is asked there. They can turn those questions off if they want to create their own. Own. Um, the questions don't appear in the book, only the answers. And so uh, whatever is typed into there is what appears in the digital book. So we're just going to limit it to, um, because this is the collaborative class book. I won't go into too much more detail on that. Um, but basically, you can enter the information for your book, you can write an introduction, and then you go up to collaborations here. And so this is where you can add your class um, your students to contribute to your book. So you invite the contributors here. So you can upload uh, the whole list of your students in one go, or you can do it one by one. So when the students are doing this as a project themselves, they can invite their family members to contribute recipe or stories about their childhood or whatever it is. So if you click on that, you've got the option to upload the list of students. And this is where you type the personalized message to the students about what you want them to contribute. So they would get um, that template page like this and they would see that you're sending, uh, you're creating a COVID-19 and me book. They have your name there um, and then your instructions. So here I've got please contribute 600 words and one photo page. So the students can see what you want exactly. Their name is automatically propagated there and that's what's automatically gonna go into the contents page. They can change that if they want. They can write their content, they can upload photos and they click submit when they're ready. So once um, they've clicked submit, you can see when they've submitted, you can view their contribution. And so if you click on that contribution, view contribution button, you can see what they have contributed. And so if there's a spelling mistake or something not right, then you can edit it there as the teacher. You can see what photo they've uploaded and um, you can make any changes if you need to. Um, you can see the students that have not contributed yet and so you can follow them up. Um, if you go to the My Book tab, this is where you can arrange the chapters, you can view the digital book, you can download a PDF version of the book as much as you like, 
you can download the audio files. So this is especially good when uh, students are interviewing uh, their family or interviewing people in the community, they can save these audio files. And so this is in online classes, they can play those audio files um, so everyone can enjoy the story or they can save these audio files. And so a lot of people say that when um, grandparents pass away, what they really miss about them is, is their voice. And so this is a great opportunity to not just only capture the story and have a great bonding experience with grandchildren and their grandparents and people in the community, but those voices can be saved as well. This bi-printed book is just here. If you wanted me to um, organize getting it printed, I can do that. You can contact me, but generally people just download a PDF and they print themselves or they go to their local printer. So if you click on view digital book, this automatically collates everything that you've inputted into your dashboard and everything that uh, the students have contributed. Um, you can see there's not many contributors there at the moment, um, but when we go, um, you know, for example, the COVID-19 and me book that these students did, you can see that as the students make their contribution, they automatically appear here. So that's what happens in your dashboard. Um, it automatically collates and you can see that. Um, so there's not much content at the moment because I haven't inputted much into this book. You can edit that content there. There's an edit button. Um, but everything, in, this is the book creating dashboard. This is where you do uh, all um, the inputting of content into the book. And then everything that's inputted into there is collated into the digital book. So in this dashboard, there's um, hints and help. There's how it works videos. Um, but yeah, basically for the COVID-19 and me book, it's pretty basic. You just go straight into the demo book, name the book cover, upload a photo, um, input an introduction, whether you want to speak it or write it, um, add the students that you want to contribute to the book, and then um, you wait for the students to contribute their content. And then that content is what enriches the lesson. And so you can uh, dive into that content as, as much or as little as you like. And then you could share that book uh, with your students, with your families, print on demand. And so that's uh, if there's any questions, let me know now. So Wiley, are you still there? <laughs> Wiley. Yes, I am here. I'm sorry, my microphone was muted. Sorry about that. That is awesome. Though. I really, really like um, everything that you have shown us about family book form. I really like the 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 fact that you can have it uh, collaborative um, yeah. with. Uh, you know, with students and, and being able to have different people contribute to the book. Yeah. And one of the things that you mentioned earlier about, you know, these times and days that we are in with the pandemic and COVID-19 and everything, I think, you know, I would definitely plus one you that this is an ideal time for us to be able to capture the stories, right? Absolutely. Um, I, one thing I wish that I would have done was to do like a picture a day, right? <laughs> During this whole time, starting in March, and then I could have put those in a book, you know? And so. Well, and, and that's the classic what kids are saying nowadays if you don't document it, it didn't happen. And this is. This is um, how, so true because unless you conscientiously make an effort to document something, it's soon forgotten. And so that's why this is a really easy way for teachers to create a historical record books of a time that's quite unusual, doesn't happen, you know, every hundred years or so. And unless we document it, this will be forgotten very quickly. You are so correct on that. I mean, you are so correct on that. I mean, uh, there was a question here uh, yeah. that came up. Uh, one of the questions was, uh, and you may be able to see it on the screen, uh, are all of the books, can you see it on the screen? Oh, no, no never mind. You, the other screen. That's okay. Are all of the books $10 after the free one? Uh, and then also, do you have to pay 
uh, $10 for each student. So really it's a question about the uh, pricing structure. How does yeah. that work? So it's $10 for a book and that book is has up to 300 people contribute to it. So um, if you're doing your class book, then it's just $10 and that's online for a year and um, 300 students can contribute content to that book. You can share it online for a year. You can download and print on demand. Um, so that one book is $10. If you're um, allocating as a communication project to students and you have 30 students, then it's 30 times $10. So often um, funding can come from um, external sources and so you, there's you, there's grants and there's funding if you're adding to libraries and things like that at the moment there's special funding otherwise you can um, also uh, parents are paying for the finished book so you can um, uh, sell at cost to the parents and if they want to buy a book um, you what they've been doing here is that usually a book costs $25 to print, so you can sell it to families for $35 or something like that. And it's a way um, the schools can make money if you want it to be a fundraiser, especially that um, the collaborative class recipe book is a popular one as a fundraiser. And that's, Ooh, that's um, the, all, all the kids contribute their favorite food, recipes, and stories. And it's a great way to create a, um, a diversity book and a cultural book because all of those um, kids have uh, different stories and different um, backgrounds and heritage maybe. And so um, all the families want to buy that book because it's, an, it's a nice little snapshot of that that class and that community. So um, that one book is $10. But um, so each student does a book, their own book, then that's online for a year and they can um, use the speech to text and the 300 contributors and that's $10. So does it does that make it clear? Also, if they do community projects, um, there's opportunities for students to monetize their time. So the project where the year nine students went into aged care, that aged care business paid the school for those students to do that project. And so um, it, that can be a fundraiser for the school as well. So if like your local church or your local historical society, for example, um, uh, wants you to do a project in your town, then the students can do that project and um, that book can be sold. So the idea is that the end book that's created is valuable to many people. So that's why it's about personal content and important content. Does that, does think, that make sense? <laughs> yes, it definitely does make sense. And I'm just kind of putting up uh, some of the information that you are sharing as well, uh, because the first book is free. So I would just want to make sure the first book is free. And then after that, uh, after that first book, then they have the opportunity to get second, third books at $10 a book with yeah. 300 people, up to 300 people to contribute to that one book. So they could yeah. have their class to contribute to that book. Yeah, the so they could- class, correct? Absolutely, yeah. They could get like a year group to contribute to one book. But the thing is, is that books are limited to 300 pages. So if you got 300 people to contribute, you would have to limit what they are contributing because you'd run out of pages. So um, that's why it's easier if you, um, invite maybe a class or two classes to contribute, maybe 60 kids, because then 60 kids can get a double page spread um, and that makes the book 120 pages and then you do an introduction and add some more photos. So then it's maybe up to about 200 pages. So if um, you see what I mean, yeah? Definitely. Another yeah. question came up, uh, do you do the printing? Like who does the printing? You can, um, send me a request to, to quote on printing if you want to. But um, typically what people do is they download the PDF and they get a local printer to print it or they bind it themselves at school. You know, your local, your, your own printer, you can print out the pages and bind it if you want to save money. Or you just send, um, you get a PDF 
uh, link and you can send that PDF link to a local printer and they can print it. Because some people, if, if kids are doing their um, grandma and grandpa's memoir, for example, this might be really precious to families. And so they would want to do it hard covered and glossy paper and, um, and that they'd want to spend a bit more money on the printing. And so my technology creates a PDF that you can download and you can print it however you want to print it. Awesome. And here in the States, we actually have uh, uh, things like um, Shutterfly. Uh, Google also has its printing services as well, where it prints the books as well. Um, yeah. But we have, you know, like uh, even at Walgreens and um, Sam's, yeah. Costco, they all have uh, the photo areas of the shop. And yeah. they also they do a variety of things. They do blankets and all of those things. But one of the sure. things that they do um, is also books. So, yeah. Ricardo, that might be a great option uh, for you as well. But I think also, if I'm not mistaken, I think Ricardo's joining from Mexico. Uh, yeah. So, so she just said, and she's going to share her contact information. I'm sure uh in just a moment so that uh you can also get uh some some uh she can also be maybe be able to support you uh with that piece as well great yeah so the printing isn't the hard bit nowadays the collecting content collecting dispersed content is, is difficult so this is what my technology scaffolds kids to actually do the work of collecting all this precious original content and so it's the process of them talking with their families bonding with their families and then bonding with their peers when they're sharing stories so this is the process that's quite complicated and difficult and so this is what um, the, my technology scaffolds is that whole process of collecting the content and often kids don't know what to ask so it's not that they're not interested in their grandparents it's just that teenagers are awkward they don't know what to ask and what to say and so having those question prompts is um like a crutch it's scaffolding for the kids to sort of get ideas on how to start a conversation and often once they've gotten started then they they have to active listening and they um they then you know get prompted themselves to to know what to ask next so this is scaffolding as much as they need and then they can turn the questions off if they don't want them. So as kids get older and um, they're doing projects where they're going into the community and interviewing other people, it might be a specific history research project or um, some sort of project where they, they are needing to come up with their own questions. And so they can do that. But this is scaffolding um, specifically around interviewing someone about their life and, and more about personal family connection. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. If you have additional questions, everyone, please feel free to drop them into the chat and we will make sure that we get them answered before we release this session. And I am going to move forward here now and I'm going to uh, go ahead and share again uh, the information. So thank you again uh, Carrie, for sharing all of that great information with us. This is really a truly uh, great uh, tool and technology that you've come up with in order to be able to support that collaboration. Yeah. It's Thank you so much. I appreciate um, you understanding uh, the breadth of it all because um, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than what people realize. So it's not just about uh, content, it's about the bonding and communication process. So thank you for that. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Glad to have you here. And so as we move forward here, everyone, I do want to let you know about some, I don't know why my light keeps going off. I do want to let you know about some additional um professional development opportunities that we have coming up next week we do have and i'll go ahead and leave up the uh sign up for the book uh family book form 
And so next week we do have uh, Casey Boyd, who is going to be with us. She is going to be talking about um, the hidden figure, your school librarian and uh, ways that school librarians can stay uh, can stay um, very much at the center of this whole uh, virtual learning uh, environment and also making sure that uh, they get the support and they are able to support students as well. If you have not joined the, uh, if you have not, oh, and I'm sorry, I forgot to put the uh, link for the registration in the chat. So here is the link for the registration. I'll go ahead and drop that into the chat for everyone. You can just register at gegluisiana.com. And if you have not taken time to join the Bitmoji challenge, we are doing a Bitmoji classroom in the Google group, also uh, available at gegluisiana.com. Um, just to kind of bring more people together and kind of let everyone get to know each other, where you're from. Uh, and as you can see, we have a variety of people who aren't from Louisiana, but we welcome you to participate in this challenge as well. And so most of you have already built these, you know, uh, uh, Carrie, I don't know if you are familiar with the whole uh, Bitmoji classroom craze that's happening right now. Are you familiar with that right now? No, I'm not. What is it? Uh, no. Oh, OK. Yes. So essentially, I'll, and I'll actually show you uh, it in just a moment. Um, let me click right here. I'll actually show it to you. And so um, we have uh, at the we also have let me show you that real quick. So a bit emoji classroom. I'm going to go right here to the. Uh, gegluisiana.com and if we scroll down here on the front page uh, we can access the, uh, the Google group and we have um, the challenge this is our Google group that's here and I think the challenge is right about uh, there it is connecting members and then right here uh, it's it's this uh, Bitmoji classroom that is very interactive and it allows for uh, students to be able to easily connect with their uh, teachers in a variety of ways. And so I'm still working on mine. So, don't, you know, don't, <laughs> don't. that's mine there. And then this is Tyler's here. And so she has uh, like if you click on different things, you can go to her. Uh, to a variety of places. You can you know, contact them and, you know, all of those different things. You can let, see that she's a, a certified trainer and go to her listing there. And then Minds is here. And so we just kicked this off. And so we definitely want you to be able to participate. And so I've got my little TV and things on the wall for mine. So we definitely want everyone to uh, participate with it. And you just go to uh, to gegluisiana.com and jump into our Google group to do that. We even had on uh, back on May 19th, we had uh, Jen Hall to present a session on uh, on how to do a Bitmoji. So on our website right here under webinars. If you scroll down to the videos of the past webinars, uh, this is the one that if you need support with getting started with a uh, Bitmoji and how to do all of that, we have that video linked for you right here. And today's video will also be linked in right here uh, where uh, where Carrie's uh, face is right now. OK, and so that'll be there in just uh, maybe about 20 minutes or so. OK, and so that's additional supports that you can get there. Oh, one other thing that I do want to say about the uh, challenge is that for those of you who may be intimidated by this whole uh, by this whole uh, creation of a Bitmoji classroom and oh, my God, where am I going to get the furniture on our first slide? If you click on it, we actually have uh, a link 
to a bunch of furniture. OK, so you can actually click here and you can grab any of the things. That's what I used right there. Uh, uh, that little whiteboard. Uh, and so we've got a bunch of different furniture that you can choose from, uh, from old school to new school and a variety of things that you can choose. I mean, we've got like, I think it's about over a hundred different slides just of, uh, worth of just, uh, furniture. Uh, so these things, uh, carry, they can get intricate. Okay. Yeah. It can get very intricate. So I'm curious to see what everyone comes up with. And so you can see there are a few different types of chairs and everything uh, that are there. And so we've got a variety of furniture there. OK, so I'm excited about that. one. All right. Yeah. OK, so uh, last thing is that you can get your uh, certificate. Everyone who attended today. Of course, in addition to getting that free access with the free book and everything, you can also get um, your certificate uh, by just going to the link that I just placed into the chat. I'll also put it on the screen as well so that you can uh, see it. This is the link. If you just type in uh, bit.ly slash G-E-G-L-A certificate. I also put it into the chat to make it a little bit easier for you to click on and just sign in for today's session. You will receive your certificate of attendance. I know many of the attendees like to make sure that they get some type of certificate so that um, they can share with their principals and things of that nature. And their, uh, and some of some people need them actually for their uh, certifications and continuing learning units and things of that nature. So that's also there available for you. All right. So with that being said, we also do want to send one more shout out to uh, MyPD247 and StreamYard for helping to make all of this possible. We also want to shout out to uh, Family Book Form and you carried for making sure that uh, we were able to receive all of this information. Remember, you can sign up at familybookform.com with that promo code. And links to the presentation are listed here as well. I'll drop those into the chat one more time so that you have access uh, to those as well. And again, this is our website. If you are not involved with uh, GEG Louisiana or want to get involved, please make sure that you go ahead and sign up. Go to our website. Um, we've got lots of things happening, a lot of different events that are coming up. And so we definitely welcome you and want you to come and grow with us. Again, thank you, Carrie, for everything. Thank you for providing this uh, absolutely awesome tool for us and the for, for everyone in the world here. Uh, and so thank you. If anyone needs to reach out to me, that's my email address and everything there as well. Carrie, did we get your contact information out there for everyone? Did we get that information there? Or? On my website, so they can contact the me through that. Yeah. And if they, do, if they do a project, share it. Share it with you or share it with me. And we can um, create case studies and ISTE and Google are desperate for case studies to show. So let us know. Definitely. Are you on, uh, is Family Book Forum on um, Twitter as well, social media or anything? Yeah. Yep. Uh, so it's under my name on Twitter, Carrie Furs. Um, but Facebook, it's uh, Family Book Forum. And yeah. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much. We really do appreciate everything you have done for us today. And with that being said, we are going to go ahead and end this session. Uh, we're going to start the countdown. Thank you so much. Any, any last words there, Carrie? No, just good luck to everyone. And let's, let's um, save history. Definitely. I'm all for it. Thank you all so much.